Ted Galen Carpenter is Vice President for Defense and Foreign Policy Studies at the Cato Institute. The author of several books on foreign policy, he also has authored more than 350 articles and policy studies. His articles have appeared in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, Los Angeles Times, and many others. Ted received his PhD in U.S. Diplomatic History from the University of Texas. The title of his talk is Bully of the Playground, How Washington Makes Enemies Abroad and Undermines Freedom at Home. Ted Galen Carpenter. Thank you, Bumper, for that uh, most gracious introduction. And I want to congratulate Bumper and the entire staff of the Future Freedom Foundation for putting on an absolutely outstanding conference. <clears throat> As Bumper indicated, the uh, title of my talk this morning is Bully of the Playground. And I use that title very deliberately because it's fair to say that bullies are usually feared by people, but they are always hated. And that is the problem that the United States is facing today. The most obvious manifestation of bullying behavior by the U.S. government is the promiscuous use of military force. Now, President uh, George W. Bush uh, would certainly disagree with that. He has made speeches on several occasions in which he has argued that for the United States, military force is always a last resort. When I relate that quote to audiences overseas, and I do travel quite a bit to East Asia, to Europe, and other parts of the world, I get one of two very distinct reactions. Either there is a stunned silence and just manifestation of utter disbelief, or increasingly that quote is greeted with gales of bitter laughter. Practically no one outside the United States believes that for Washington, military force is a last resort. Indeed, increasingly, it has become the first resort. Just consider the number of occasions that the United States has used significant military force since the end of the Cold War. Let's count up the incidents. Panama, 1989, the overthrow of Manuel Noriega, a client of the United States that got uppity and uh, tried to play both sides of the street working with the CIA and cozying up to Fidel Castro, a definite no-no when it comes to the attitude of U.S. officials. 1991, the first Gulf War. 1992-93, Somalia. Started out as a humanitarian mission and very quick, quickly morphed into a UN-led nation-building mission with the U.S. signing on. Haiti, where the U.S. threatened to invade and forced the uh, dictator of that country to cede power. Bosnia, the bombing of the Bosnian Serbs in direct U.S. intervention in that country's civil war. Operation Desert Fox in the late 1990s, an intense, albeit brief, bombing campaign against Iraq. Uh, even though that was officially called Operation Desert Fox, given the troubles that Bill Clinton was having with Monica Lewinsky and that scandal at the time, I always referred to that uh, operation as Operation Desperate Fox whenever I was giving media interviews. Uh, seventh incident, the cruise missile attacks against Afghanistan and that most threatening aspirin factory in Sudan. 1999, the war over Kosovo, where the United States and its allies bombed targets in Serbia and killed 
something in the area of 2,000 Serbs. The invasion and occupation of Afghanistan after 9-11. And of course, most recently, the invasion and occupation of Iraq. Now that's 10 major incidents in roughly 18 years. And that doesn't count the numerous attacks waged to enforce the no-fly zone in Iraq between the two Gulf Wars. That is an extraordinary level of belligerency. To say that that is the record of a government that regards military force as a last resort would make a character in a George Orwell novel blush with shame. And of course, we have other wars on the horizon. Certainly, there is a very serious possibility of war with Iran over that country's nuclear program and over US allegations that Iran is interfering in Iraq. Imagine that. I mean, that, that is really horrible to imagine a country interfering in Iraq's internal affairs. We certainly would not contemplate doing anything like that. This is a tremendously dangerous possibility because I think it's fair to say that if the United States attacks Iran, that would make the third Muslim country in less than six years. And I would venture to say there wouldn't be a Muslim from Morocco to Malaysia who would not be convinced at that point that the United States is out to destroy their culture, their civilization, and their religion. So as bad as things have been the past 18 years, and for that matter before that, I don't, I don't want to minimize the degree of US intervention during the Cold War, but as bad as that has been, it could get a whole lot worse. Military force, though, is not the only manifestation of bullying behavior. There are other things that the United States government has done to earn the hatred of much of the world. Consider the US-led sanctions, economic sanctions, against Iraq between 1991 and 2003. Reliable estimates indicate that those economic sanctions resulted in the needless deaths of as many as 500,000 Iraqi children. In the late 1990s, then Secretary of State Madeleine Albright was confronted with that reality during a news interview, and she was asked point blank if given the civilian cost in Iraq, whether the sanctions were worth it. Now keep in mind, this is in the context where she has been told that as many as a half a million young Iraqi children have died needlessly. And she responded, well, yes, it, it was worth it to undermine Saddam Hussein's regime. You can imagine how well that comment played in the Muslim world and beyond. Then we have the activities of the CIA. So mistrusted is the CIA around the world that one wag observed the CIA has been blamed for 11 of the last four coups that it orchestrated. <laughs> and there is a good deal of truth to that, that uh, the CIA has engaged in so many nefarious activities that the United States sometimes gets blamed even when it's not responsible for developments in countries. After all, there are cases where civil wars break out purely because of indigenous factors, where regimes are overthrown purely because of indigenous factors. But the CIA has had its hands dirty so often that people in most parts of the world just assume if a coup takes place and the regime that takes power is reasonably friendly to the United States, the CIA is behind it. Well, this started early on in 1953 with the overthrow of Iran's democratic government and the restoration of the Shah of Iran to power. 